Hello, welcome. Uh, my name is Odanga. I am currently a researcher for elections and platform integrity at the Mozilla Foundation. And I will be taking you through a few case studies that cover how artificial, generative artificial intelligence is being used in elections across the globe. So ahead of the elections in Bangladesh, generative AI played a significant role in the political landscape, reflecting a global trend where AI technology, especially deep fakes, have increasingly become tools for political campaigns and misinformation. AI generated deep fakes of newscasters, which could be created for as little as $24 a month were used to accuse U.S. diplomats of interfering in Bangladesh's elections. This instance underscores a broader concern about the role of AI in sowing distrust within democratic processes. The deepfakes not only misrepresented real situations, but also contributed to a climate of skepticism where voters might begin to doubt the authenticity of all news, whether fake or real. The proliferation of such kinds of, of technology poses a risk not just in creating false narratives, but also in eroding the trust in electoral processes and democratic institutions at large. The Bangladesh Electoral Commission tasked with ensuring a fair and legal electoral process faced challenges amidst, amidst demands for a caretaker government to oversee the election a proposal opposed by the ruling party. The election's fairness was further scrutinized due to the potential for AI-generated disinformation to influence public perception and the electoral outcome. So this scenario in Bangladesh is part of a larger global conversation about the impact of AI on elections, democracy, and the spread of misinformation. As the technology becomes more accessible and powerful, its ability to convince, uh, to its ability to create convincing deepfakes and targeted propaganda presents new challenges for societies striving to maintain the integrity of their democratic processes. Now, one other very big danger that I think Bangladesh was able to also reveal to very many people was that. It shows not only how AI tools can be exploited in elections, but also in the difficulty of controlling their use in similar markets that risk being overlooked by tech companies. And this presents a very specific problem because you, many tech companies have priority markets that might not that might not be that will perhaps receive a majority of the attention in terms of how the kind of safeguards that they will put in place ahead of an election. And these are likely to be the ones that will likely get the first kinds of safeguards against the proliferation of AI-generated election misinformation. So during the electoral period in Slovakia, generative AI technologies, particularly deepfakes, also played a significant role in shaping um, the political narratives and presenting a challenge to the integrity of the electoral process. Um, the use of generative uh, deepfake audio recordings of Slovakian politicians discussing, the ele discussing election rigging emerged as a prominent example. These recordings were released during a critical pre-election period, exploiting loopholes in social media platform policies and creating false narratives that were difficult to, for, many, for many stakeholders to debunk in real time. Um, this situation served as a test case for the EU's Digital Services Act aimed at, combining, at combating online disinformation because despite efforts by social media platforms like Facebook to add fact check labels to their manipulated content, the incident highlighted the complexities and challenges of identifying and combating AI-generated misinformation. Um, experts who had tried to debunk the piece of content, you know, could not outrightly also come out and say that the piece of content was false, largely because of how hard it is to try and debunk generative 
or rather audio that has been created by generative artificial intelligence tools. And, and you know, therefore, experts have raised concerns that um, more robust measures are needed to prevent the spread of such content um, because the truth about it is that at the point that we are at now, there are not necessarily as many tools that are reliable enough for, for people such as fact checkers or other election stakeholders to be able to identify whether generative AI uh, or rather to identify whether a piece of audio has been created by generative AI tool or has been actually said by a politician. And this is also very likely to increase what we like to call the liar's dividend as well, where you know we find that um, we find that it also allows politicians to get away with a lot more because they can easily escape or evade accountability for their own speech if they do get caught um, saying something. So as AI continue, technology continues to advance, I think it becomes increasingly important for governments and tech companies and civil society to collaborate on actually time to see how they can develop um, effective tools to safeguard electoral integrity and democracy against the disruptive potential of defects and other forms of AI-generated uh, misinformation. So the, my next example is not necessarily going to involve an election, but I think will be something that we will be we will learn a lot from in terms of trying to understand one, how do societies inoculate themselves from the dangers of generative artificial intelligence? Um, and also what are, what, what do, what are the most vivid dangers of this technology um, towards some of the people that will be participating in elections? And particularly uh, in this case, I'm talking about women. Um, so in late January 2024, a controversy erupted when sexually explicit AI generated deepfake images of Taylor Swift um, were spread on social media platforms and they sparked widespread outrage and calls for legal and regulatory actions. In particular, um, AI generated images of Taylor Swift had flooded um, X, which is um, X, which is owned by a certain billionaire. And at the time, at a time, I think when going viral is a term that is widely overused, I think these truly found a very large audience. Um, one of the most prominent examples of the Taylor Swift AI images um, attracted more than 45 million views on X's platform alone and 24,000 reposts and hundreds of thousands of likes and bookmarks before the verified user who shared the images had had their account suspended for violating um, X's platform policies. The post was live on the platform for about 17 hours prior to its removal. But as users dis began to discuss the viral post, the images began to spread and were posted across to other accounts, not only to other accounts, but to other platforms. And I think most notably Facebook also specifically had uh, some of that content posted across to it as well. Um, so whereas generative AI, I think, is, you know, to many is the main subject of this story, I think the Taylor Swift example um, also shows what the dangers of uh, an internet ecosystem that is not ready to integrate um, certain protections um, it shows the dangers of what that is likely to be. Um, it's a clear sign of what happens when trust and safety teams are not necessarily up to task within, well, within their platforms. Um, and that is why in particular, this kind of content was able to spread very rapidly across X, the platform. Microsoft's tools were also identified to have been used to create the deep fix. But however, however, since then, they have since gone ahead to block the keywords that were allegedly used to create, to create the content. And Microsoft also enhanced its text to image model to prevent similar abuses in the future and have also pledged 
to invest in watermarking tech in more robust watermarking technologies um, to be able to ident- to be able to help you know stakeholders and other other entities that are involved in protecting inf- information integrity um to be able to identify such kinds of content so i think for me this in particular i think presents the biggest danger because we do know that gender disinformation is definitely a very big, big threat towards information integrity ahead of elections. And especially when it is used to degrade, degrade and demean um, female candidates ahead of, ahead of voting processes. So this is one area where I think we can definitely learn a lot in terms of what, what is achievable um, and the kinds of places where we can try and see who exactly should be held accountable for the for the spread of generative AI content. One is the companies that make these that make these generative AI um, generative AI tools. Right? Can they watermark their content? Um, can they identify certain keywords that are used to generate such certain types of dangerous content and try to keep their their tools from responding to them? Two, it is for the platforms that serve as the distribution mechanisms for a lot of this generated their content. Um, do they have the right amount of content moderation resources to be able to keep this kind of content from spreading widely on their platforms? Um, do they integrate um, certain measures to keep um, this content from spreading on their platforms in the first place? Um, you know, measures such as, um, uh, or rather, measures such as using classifiers that are immediately able to identify um, AI-generated content or content that involves nudity, because a lot of women candidates do tend to face those kind of attacks ahead of elections. So I think the Taylor Swift example will definitely work in terms of just helping us understand what are the right, what what are the, at least for now, the best choices that can be made in terms of trying to figure out how to curtail the nefarious use of generative AI tools ahead of elections. <laughs>